Hey YouTube, we're back at the original location and we're on time this week for this Sunday video update. I'm Jared Fuller. Happy Father's Day to all of the dads out there, including my own father. Uh, today is Sunday, June 17th, 2018. Lots to talk about. Um, right off the bat, I was at Olivia's, uh, 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 the, the benefit, the fundraiser for Olivia Marks last night in St. Clair, Michigan. Um, she's just, she's a sweetheart. I love her to pieces. Um, she gave me hugs when, when um, she came in because I, I got in there, like, I don't know, about an hour early. And I ordered some food. 25% of all sales went to help Olivia. But I'm sitting there eating food. I had a Nacho Supreme and a Pepsi, and, and I get a tap on the shoulder like this. And I turn around, and there's Olivia being carried in by her mom. I said, well, hi there, sweet pea. And her mom says, are you going to give Jared a hug? And she leaned in, and I said, hi, baby girl, I love you. You know, and, and we talked. I mean, she talked to me for a little bit, which was really cool. Um, and I have another bracelet. I have two bracelets from Olivia Marks. Um, this one right here. This is the newest one. This yellow one. And this is the first one that she had given me right here. So I have two Olivia Marks bracelets. And, of course, I wear these bracelets all the time to uh, show my support and for awareness efforts, of course. Um, yeah, it was a great time last night. I posted a video, or I uploaded a video, rather, um, showing the, the drawbridge that goes through the town of St. Clair. Um, when the boats are passing through, the bridge opens up, and it was pretty cool. We have, I think we have bridges like that in Bay City. Um, but I think you have to pay to cross those now. I heard, or at least I heard something about that on the news. But anyway, we have bridges um, like that here in Michigan because we are known for our lakes and our rivers and streams. And, of course, we have the Saginaw Bay, and we've got Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, Superior. Um, so we're we're known for that kind of stuff but anyway i i had a great time i wish the circumstances of course could have been different um and that's that's something that really just blows me away and it kind of it bugs me that it takes for something horrible it takes for a tragedy to bring people together it, it really bothers me why can't people just come together for the sake of coming together through the good and the bad uh, but my heart will always go out to Olivia and, and her family and, and her mom is just absolutely sweet she's a sweetheart, I love her I cherish her and adore her so much I don't know if these people ever watch my videos but I I really do love these people and, and um, that goes for anybody I've ever reached out to uh, in this community and speaking of the child and cancer community, don't forget to visit GuideStar.org. GuideStar.org is where you will find information about legitimate 501c3 nonprofit organizations and LLCs. Don't just give your money to anyone. GuideStar.org will tell you if certain 501c3s and LLCs exist. Um... And this was something I wanted to kind of talk about as well, which should be no big surprise because I'm always trying to expose the frauds and, and make them go away. Uh, so I had this conversation with a, a bereaved parent. Uh, her daughter had passed away from DIPG. And so we, we were talking in email, and I said, well, you know, this GuideStar.org is a, is a very good website that you should use because they are tied in with the Internal Revenue Service. They're tied in with the federal government. And all 501c3 nonprofit organizations and LLCs, of course, have to be approved by federal government. And GuideStar will tell you, I mean, all I have to do is type in the name of, of whatever front that people like to put out there. Um, and, of course, if you search GuideStar.org and if there's no matching documents of 
the name that people like to give or of the person's name, then guess what? You have been gypped. You've been lied to. And the, the, the one of the bigger things in the child of cancer community that is important, specifically important, is your integrity. If you are coming here to make yourself look popular, to make yourself look famous, to, to hoister your, your ego, and to boost your confidence, go somewhere else and do that. These families and these kids are in desperate need of real help. They don't need you using them to, hey, you know, aren't I cute, aren't I special, aren't I awesome, aren't I so sweet? No, you're not, because it's not about you. It's about the kids. And we have a lot of people. We have a lot of dishonest people in the child of cancer community. And anyone watching this would say, well, Jared, who are you to say who's honest and dishonest? Well, I'm not saying it. Their actions will speak for themselves, and I'm just showing you or telling you that their actions are kind of speaking for themselves, and if you can't see that, well, you're part of the problem and not part of the solution. Uh, because there are, without a shadow of a doubt, there are people in this community, they use pediatric cancer as a fashionable medium to uh, raise up their egos, to make themselves look important. And if that's all you're here for, you go somewhere else. Uh, and I even had this conversation with with a mom uh, of a cancer warrior. She says, you know, of all the things, which, I mean, we need people raising awareness, and we need people who will uh, help get the word out. But of all the different organizations that they could be involved with or all the different communities that they can be involved with why childhood cancer and it's a good question I mean you know it's deserving of an answer a legitimate answer I don't know why they had chosen childhood cancer I I don't know uh, and, and a lot of people would, would even dare say, well, how did Jared choose childhood cancer? Well, that's an easy answer because I am a childhood cancer survivor. So, yeah, that's naturally, of course, that's going to be the issue. But um, for the most part, I don't know why people choose childhood cancer. I understand that it's underfunded by the, the government, severely and sorely underfunded by the, the federal government. And research and funding is is really something we need to push. Uh, and I hope that, that things change in my lifetime. I hope that we're able to find innovative uh, alternative drugs, you know, alternative to chemo. I mean, there's people who use CBD oil and, and cannabis oil and all that stuff. Um, but there's also the issue, and I, I had made a, a little video, a short excerpt about um, why, you know what, it, it's okay to want to help people and suggest alternatives to chemotherapy. But this is this is the real... This is the real deal, and I'm going to reiterate this briefly. Um, the treatment plan that the children are receiving with chemotherapy or, or CBD or whatever it is, that had to have been approved by the parent because sometimes the warrior may be too young to make those determinations, like I was. I had chemotherapy. But that is something that has to be discussed between the parents and the oncologists. The parents, while they do appreciate your concern, and they appreciate the fact that you had done your research to find something better or different than uh, chemotherapy, you cannot take it personally if the parents say, no, thank you. I don't. I don't like the idea that I have to choose pumping poison through my child's body versus not doing it and risking they're going to die either way. Um, that's the position they're in. 
and although you, you, you're trying to be helpful, but you may not see it that way. There, there may be a bit of a misconception. And so, as a survivor and as an advocate, of course, I want to clarify that you should not take it personally, and you should kind of retrace your steps and rethink a little bit on how you would approach that kind of a situation, because the treatment options that are set in place... Like I said, sometimes the warriors are too young to really understand what's going on, so it has to be done between the parent and the oncologist. Or you have situations where the warriors are old enough to understand, and then it becomes a trifecta conversation between parent, warrior, and oncologist. That has to be something that they agree upon. It's not just, oh, well, let's just try this. No, you have to agree. You have to come to a conclusion. You have to have conversations based on the treatment options and the protocols that you're going to take. Um, you have to be willing to have those discussions. And there are consent forms you have to sign. There's there's a lot of legal red tape you have to go through the whole nine. So this is coming from someone who, you know, I, I know what that is. And I've had discussions with my parents about this as well. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter that, well, you know, back then it was different from now. Well, the protocols may have changed or the, the treatments may have changed, but we're still talking about modern medicine. And, and at that time, when I was battling cancer in 1989, then it was considered modern as well. Today's modern medicine, yeah, things have changed. We, we've We've stood on the shoulders of the earliest pioneers of pediatric medicine and the survivors. We've learned a lot from them, the long-term survivors. And one of the big reasons that I had chosen advocacy for, for research and funding of childhood cancer is because I want for people to take from my story of survival, my journey, I want for other parents, other children out there to be able to take from the story that I give and, and maybe learn some things to provide some education. And, you know, for me, it's not about being a big shot. We have plenty of those in this community, and I think it's disgusting. But if my only goal or if my only objective was to be Mr. Hot Shot, big time, rock and roll, godfather, grand Fla grand, grandmaster flash of childhood cancer awareness, if that was my only goal or my only intention, I would have ended it a long time ago. That's not my, that's not my trip. It's not my shtick. Um, I want for people to be educated. And there are a lot of indirectly affected advocates who also want other people to be uh, educated about some things. Um, I, I remember seeing an argument on Facebook some time ago about, uh, well, it was between my opposition and someone who's now a very good friend of mine, and we, we talk and, and we're, we get along great now. In the beginning, we kind of didn't, but we got to know each other, or she got to know me, and now we're really good friends. Um, but it was between her and my opposition. Um, my, there was a big fight going on on Facebook, and... and he says, well, I actually corresponded with these kids. I actually got to meet these kids, and she didn't. And, and you know, if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't know what she knows now. And it's like, wow. So that's so that's your, your angle. That's your take on your so-called, quote-unquote, advocacy efforts to be a douchebag and say, well, if it wasn't for me, well, I got news for you. Um... Whether or not you correspond directly with the kids, I mean, that's irrelevant. Totally and completely irrelevant. That's number one strike. Number two strike is um, I was actually one of those kids. So, in essence, if it wasn't for me, a, a natural member of this community, you wouldn't know what you know. So I think the wise thing to do at that point would be to zip the lip because you are in no position to run your mouth either. Um, but I would defend, you know, this, this, this friend of mine, uh, I, I would defend her now in a hot second if someone was tearing her down or trash-talking her. I would defend her 
in a, in a hot second because she's she's not she's not a bad person. She just didn't know me, and sometimes you have to get to know each other so you can make assessments and understand each other's angle and and you know. But that's all water under the bridge. We're good friends now, and I have no worries, none at all. But anyway, moving on, it's going to be really hot today. I have an open house at 2 o'clock in Owasso. It's supposed to be 95 degrees today. And I'm not looking forward to that at all. I'm not a fan of the heat. Fortunately, I will be inside an air-conditioned building. So that will be nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm... Yeah, I, I just, I, I don't like the heat. It's just too much to take. Too much to take. Some people love the heat. I don't understand why that is. Um, but it could be, too, because they don't have the same kind of issues that I have. Being allergic to the sun and, and uh, you know, the well, it's not so much the red hair. Although, red hair may be a contributing factor to... Uh, you know, because we're very sensitive to the sun, us redheads are. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that they didn't have to go through chemo and radiation, and I did. And that has a very hard and profound impact on your immune system. It, it changes... Cancer changes everything, folks. I, I, I don't know how more clear I can be than that, than to say that cancer absolutely changes everything. Um, but I'm kind of feeling it already. I mean, my hands are kind of starting to swell up a little bit because I can feel when I make a fist or when I open my hand, I can feel my skin stretching. Um, so my hands are a little swollen now as we speak. Uh, early signs of uh, photosensitivity flare up. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. Um, it's very, very, <laughs> very barbaric, to say the very, very least. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'll live with that for the rest of my life, and there's nothing I can do. I don't know of any alternative, you know, Anything I can use. I've, I've tried the highest SPF sunblock, and that was something else I kind of wanted to talk about with photosensitivity because photosensitivity is, it, it comes off as a sunburn, uh, you know, on the surface of the skin. But it doesn't stop at a sunburn, for me anyway. My hands will swell up and itch and they become inflamed, and it's hard to bend my hands, it's hard to open my, and close my hands, you know, make fists. Um, even my lips will get dry and cracked, and it's really horrible. It's a horrible feeling. Um, people say, well, I've never heard of photosensitivity before. Well, that's, that's why you should research it. Now we have Google. Research the stuff. Um, photosensitivity is not the same. The symptoms aren't the same across the board. It affects people differently than others. And uh, just Google it. There it is on the bottom of your screen. Hey, magic. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very not good. <laughs> um, so... I really don't know what else to talk about. I have run out of things to say. I'm, I think this Thursday, because today is the 17th, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, Thursday the 21st. I'll be in Grand Haven, Michigan uh, at the Pizza Hut for a benefit fundraiser for a little boy named Connor. And I had went to visit him at DeVos Children's Hospital in Grand Rapids uh, a couple weeks ago. And very sweet kid. 
I mean, you saw the video. The Star Wars characters were coming in, and that, that was really, really cool. I had never experienced anything like that before, and it was really awesome. Um, so, there's that going on. Uh, and of course, today's Father's Day. Um, I don't have kids, so... You know, I, and I, I often wonder this a lot. When do we get a day? When did the people, you know, the people who didn't reproduce, we don't have kids, when do we get a day? Well, you know, you didn't bring a kid into the world. Have a beer. Or, you know, when do we get some kind of a special treatment for not bringing children into the world? Um, not that there's anything wrong with having kids, but, you know... We live in a we live in a, a culture in a society where sex is big business, and we have whether you want to believe this or not, we have an overpopulation issue, and, and it's a big issue. A lot of people don't believe that; they think that there's enough resources for everybody. There's actually more people than there are resources. Uh, the studies are in. So. My my only question is, is, when do we get a day, us single people, us childless people, when do we get a day where we're celebrated? Because, you know, I, I, I'm an uncle. I have nieces, and, and where's my day? When do I get a day? When When is there a day for single childless people? And... I'm I'm just kind of sitting here thinking, you know, we live in a we live in a sex crazed society, and we not only does sex sell, but we celebrate it. We celebrate human reproduction. It's not anything to be celebrated, and that's well, that was a long ring, Grandpa. Hello, hey, Dad left. He went over to he went over to Jay's. Yeah. Okay, I'll let him know you called. Bye bye. That was my grandpa. Um, so we we live in a sex crazy society and we celebrate human reproduction. And I'm it's no you know, it's not a miracle, it's not a blessing that we were born with reproductive organs. I just kind of find that funny, that people actually think that we've been blessed with penises and vaginas <laughs> and ovaries and cervixes. I, I, don't, I don't understand where people think it's a blessing or it's, it's miraculous. There's nothing miraculous about human reproduction, but yet it gets celebrated largely in America. I, I, I don't understand. And, and, you know, people watching this would say, well, no, you wouldn't understand because you don't have kids. So what? I've held babies. I mean, yeah, and I do get emotional when I hold a baby because it's like, oh, you're so cute, you know. You're so beautiful. You're so precious. But... I mean, okay, so it's, babies are a product of <laughs> a man's sperm and a woman's egg. What's so miraculous? It's cause and effect. I, I don't see what's so great about it. So, and, and with that being said, I kind of find Mother's Day and Father's Day to be no big deal. And it's not to say that I don't love and appreciate my mother and my father, but it's like, you guys had sex. And now you think you should be showered with gifts and and have parties and cookouts because you had sex? It's silly, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I've treated my dad to, you know, a meal, a Father's Day meal. I've, I've taken him to the restaurants or whatever, but it's like, well... I, I don't mind taking you out to do stuff, but, I mean, I'm not going to congratulate you 
good job for him and unprotected sex. I mean, come on. You know, I to me it's just silly. If I ever have kids of my own someday, which I highly doubt I ever will, um, <clears throat> I don't want anything special. I don't want to be treated like I should be rewarded for not wearing a condom. <laughs> come on. It's silly to me. It's just, I, I don't know. It's just really... Uh, I have no clue. I have no idea. It's just really funny to me. And I may very well be missing the point. Because I know what fatherhood and motherhood, the, the meaning behind it. If it wasn't for mom and dad, they teach you, you know, you wouldn't know what you know now. They teach you what you know now. They teach you morals, they teach you ethics, they teach you the things that you need to know to be active, productive citizens. I get all that. But the way people go on and on and on and on about this, it's like, you know, mice reproduce, my cats reproduced. When, I, when my cat Scooter was doing it with our female cat, I didn't treat him to a porterhouse. He's a cat. I'm not going to congratulate him or spoil him because he made a litter of kittens. Hey, so what? It's nature. That's what we do. I don't think it should be celebrated. Uh, <sighs> sex is sacred? Yeah, I don't know how well that holds up in a world of 7 billion people. Um, it's beyond my understanding. It's just weird to me. It's just like big whoop de doo And you know, believe it or not, there are actually a lot of parents and you know mothers and fathers who actually have said this. Like it's just another day. I, I'm a mother or a father every single day. I don't need one day in particular to be treated like a king or treated like a prince I'm you know I, I had children and, and that's an everyday thing for me I, you know I, I don't understand it even if I have kids I don't think I would ever understand why we celebrate as Bill Maher puts it spawning <laughs> and he, he's right though um, there should be an I didn't reproduce day I watched one of his real-time um, segments, and he says, well, I didn't bring a kid into the world. Where's my coupon that's free for one good foot rub? Um, where's my breakfast in bed, you know? I didn't bring a kid into the world. Where, where do I get special? Where's my special treatment at? Um, and he's right. I mean, I, I agree with him because us us single and childless people, you know, they, they refer to childless as like the bubonic plague, or there's something wrong with us because we don't have kids. You know, maybe either we don't want kids, or we can't have kids, or we just haven't found someone special to settle down and want to have kids with. Uh, there's a lot of different angles to parenting and becoming parents and people who feel that they should be showered and adored because they brought a baby into the world whatever you're nothing special I hate to break it to you but you just did what generations before us have done you have continued the chain of life you don't get a medal for that um I don't know, I've rambled on about this for too long. But anyway, I have to get around, I have to get going, i got to put gas in the van, and it's already afternoon. I've been here for a little under a half an hour. So, I'm going to wrap this up. And thanks, Grandpa, for interrupting my video. Uh, he was just calling to find out where my dad was. He went over to my brother Jay's. Uh, Jay went on a, on a bike run, I think, or a motorcycle trip to Breedsville, Michigan. A lot of people don't know where Breedsville is. I think it's south, but I would have to check my maps again. Um, 
yeah, that's where my brother is, and that's where my dad is, and where I am headed to now is Owasso, that way. So, thank you for watching another installment of the Sunday Video Update. Much love to all of you. Thank you again so much for watching. Happy Father's Day. My name is Jared Fuller, a.k.a. The Jared Bear. Much love, and peace out. Take care, guys.